man, let's talk about Earl Spence versus, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name properly, but Vakram Martavelli, whatever his name is. He just won an IBF title versus uh, uh, Jack Cole Clyde. I didn't know that Jack Cole Clyde was 38 years old, so he knocked out Cole Clyde in the 11th round. He got some crack. I think he fought on a couple PBC shows, either him or the guy they talking about, Crawford. Maybe fighting for the WBO, WBA next. I don't believe that. As far as two titles being on the line for a black man, one being vacant for versus titles, I don't believe that. So, man, he's just how boxing works. But, uh, shout out. But that's Israel Matamar. But back Ryan, Martavelli, however you pronounce his name, beat Cole Clock. I don't know where they fought. Probably in Germany or some shit like that. And he held the IBF title, was vacant. They stripped Charlo ass naked. But then again, it's just the box sanction at Bell Bodies are so uh so sketchy it just move off a dollar it's very corrupt in my opinion so jamal still hold the title but then jamal has defended his title consolidated titles and they strip him of every title uh every title which makes no sense in my humble opinion um you know it makes no sense um i don't understand that but jamal can help, uh, can, can keep titles and hold titles and all that shit man but like I said before, it just don't make no sense. But apparently they stripped him uh, versus a guy who, for the most part, uh, nobody heard of. That's the problem. Versus a guy nobody heard of. Um, uh, nobody care about. And they be giving these title shots to these guys. And I just feel like it needs to be a format other than them handing you cash for spots. And in my opinion, allegedly, that's what's going on. They giving these guys cash for spots, for rankings and all that bullshit. You know, guys need to literally have to fight the name guys to get title shots and then need to actually fight title eliminators to get in those positions. But, you know, the guy got some punch, guy can punch, but if you win 11th round with a 38-year-old Jack Cattle, I mean, Jack uh, Coldfly, um, he gave Demetrius Andrade a tough fight in, in Germany when Andrade was coming off a long layoff back in the day. But uh, if you're going 12 rounds, if I'm Errol Spence, I'm jumping on that. No diddy. Um, you know, I'm going out there, seeing if I can put myself to be the IBF. They allowed me to hold the welterweight IBF title for years without ordering a mandatory. So obviously he has a, a good relationship, or a great relationship with them. On top of that, we start continuing to talk about the relationship. I mean, as soon as Crawford get the belt, they strip him. You know? They strip him for a guy who ain't been active. He said, Daron Ennis said he got some big news coming. So, they strip him for inactive guys. It's crazy. You know? So, they ain't got money coming in regardless. That just lets you know a lot of this shit is off the dollar, bro. I keep telling you all this. A lot of this is off the dollar. It was told to me allegedly Al Hayne was paying the WBC for Jamal Charlo still to be champion. But at the same time, Carlos Adamas signed with PBC. So where's the justice for him? Just being the interim champion. Where's the justice for him at? So it ain't like if Jamal gets stripped, Carlos Adamas ain't gonna get the belt, he's the interim champion. So ain't it what's best for the company? No, he doing what's best for for uh what's best for the company. He just doing what's best on the, I don't know, what's best for whatever. You know, maybe for the individual or whatever, but like I said before. His methods just don't don't add up and don't make no sense, in my humble opinion. But you know, Sp you know, Spence versus uh, Matamov, you know, I feel like that's a fight. Um, that's a fight that should happen. You know, Earl, you know, can get in there for the vacant IBF title. Uh, I hate that this ramp is closed, man. Cause everybody want to make this left turn. I gotta start remembering to go an alternative route, bro. Cause you know, this left turn is like five seconds, and it's like. It take 30 minutes just to make the left turn at the light. Like, people in Michigan literally can't make left turns. You can't make this shit up. Man. But, um, but yeah, I think that's a fight for Spence, bro. That's a, that's a good fight for him. The guy can punch. You always worry about guys can punch, especially off guys coming off knockout, getting knocked out or whatever. But I just figured he went 12 rounds with Jack Cole Clyde, or 11th round with Jack Cole Clyde, knocked him out in the 11th round. Errol Smith should be able to, to get that guy. You know, Errol Smith, he undefeated. You know, I think he's 22-0 with, with 17 knockouts or something. Like, Errol Smith should be able to clip cuz. 
you know, but anytime you go in there, you go in there with, at least we're going to get in there with Fondor, but I don't think people really think of Fondor as a puncher. You know, he's a value guy. I don't think people think, oh man, Fondor going to knock you out one punch, you know what I'm saying? But them accumulation shots and Arrow don't really move his head like that, so, you know, maybe a guy like Matamov, he can just uh, outvalue Matamov. I don't think he can outvalue him a Sebastian Fondor. That's, that was my opinion on it. I didn't think he can out, you know, just out, just overwhelm him. But maybe Matamov, or yeah, Matamov, he can overwhelm him. You know, maybe Matamov, he can he can overwhelm him a bit and hit him with some volume and, 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 and stuff shit like that. So uh, that's that's quite possible. Um, um, I'm behind two big ass trucks. Sneak on that ball, oh, damn a straight truck to make it left turn. I just hate they got this freeway, man. I moved over here. The freeway was closed. They opened it back for a second. Now it's closed again. Oh, I hate that shit. It seemed like ten minutes, seven, ten minutes to get to work that way. <laughs> Other day I was going to the movies. I live right around the corner. No, it took like 30 minutes to get to the movies on a five, six minute drive because, because the freeway was closed now. I just got to keep reminding myself, like, I got to take the other way. Avoid this bullshit. But I think Spence, I think, I think, I mean, I ain't really mad. I see, I probably seen Madam off, like, I don't remember, but thinking he get an IBF title. They strip Fondor to WBO. Him and Fondor can fight for the WBC. That make a lot of sense. And then people say, well, him and Bud can rematch. It ain't going to be no rematch. They going for Canelo. They going for Mellow Yellow Canelo. Mellow Red Canelo. That's what they going for, so. Uh, but it's a danger there when you fight somebody that can crack. And Earl Spence been above 150, uh, 50, 47 pounds. The bitch, he fought at 54 before. He just looked like trash. He looked real robotic. He looked real stiff. So that's why I feel like he sunk down so he can have a size advantage. He didn't have a skill set to stand. I mean, he, I don't even be sure they can got him a title shot up there, bro. He would have won the title in the beginning. I think going to 47 kind of boosted his confidence. He was able to be bigger than guys, and that was his advantage. Now going to 54, you know, um, this nigga literally stopped. Bro. What are we stopping for? Must be the light. But yeah, man. Um, yeah, I think it might just be you know, phys you know, his physical. Now we gonna see. I told y'all the nigga wasn't that skilled, man. You break down the tape, nigga basic as hell. Troy King been seeing. Troy King been saying. I've been seeing. When I really broke down that film on Instagram, you see how bad he really was. So anybody that watched the Instagram breakdown, I showed y'all what was gonna happen if he fought Bud. I thought he I thought he was gonna be able to take the ass. I thought it was just too much pride in the line for him to get knocked out. That was my opinion. You know, I thought it was too much pride on the line, but you know, obviously it wasn't. He didn't go down, you know. He, the referee stopped it. Which I got a video coming about that probably this week. The referee stealing motherfuckers, uh, stealing niggas' joy and shit by prematurely stopping this fight. Let let these motherfuckers get knocked out. Stop saving these motherfuckers, man. They know what they signed up for. Oh, they did. Why you stopping? No, no. Let's not bring it to that. You know, put these niggas dick in the dirt. <laughs> no kidding. Let these motherfuckers get drilled into the canvas. Pause. Feel me? But Matamon, hey, that's a good IBF title. Why, you know, Tim Zoo doing this thing versus Fondor. You know, then you turn around and do it, do the unification. You know, Bug gets two belts. I mean, then they both can move on and go chase Canelo. We know PBC got the inside track to Canelo, unless Canelo gonna, you know, fight uh, Bud over there in Saudi Arabia, or they, you know, she gonna put on, or his ex excellent excellency gonna put on the fight somewhere in North America. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't claim, I wouldn't count on seeing undisputed. Even if Canelo like retired, like, I'm done. I wouldn't count on seeing undisputed. They both was to get a belt, and I don't think Errol Spence could beat Fondor Tim Zoo. I don't think so. And you know, like I said, I could be wrong. But the wear and tear on his ass, and then you know he didn't blew up and wait, and then he got to get a new coach. I mean. I think Robert Garcia might be the best choice. Then he still wanna probably gonna wanna live in Dallas and shit, man. He just making too many self-inflicted mistakes, bro. Staying in Dallas was a bad mistake. Just from the beginning. As soon as she got some bread, he supposed to get the fuck up out of here. 
Now these niggas don't want to be close to my family so they can sack chase and nickel and dime your ass to death, man. Man, that's the best thing I, I tell a lot of these brothers, man. The best thing to do, man, I remember Mike told me this. He said the best thing he ever did was move out of his mother's house. You know, you don't know, you never know how how far you getting held back. You getting held back. You know, real talk. And then, you know, I think another thing a lot of these brothers need to just get move away, bro. And it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard at first, man, but you know, you're gonna figure it out. I don't have a choice. Get away from that shit, man. You got that money, get away from them niggas, man. I think you should have moved, moved somewhere. I don't know, but you should have moved somewhere else. I guarantee all that beef he had, all that bullshit he had, man, his career would have been totally different. Totally different. Motherfuckers ain't good. Sometimes I'm like, hey, man, the guy sent him a warning shot and still didn't listen. But, you know, a lot of these niggas, man, they feel the need to need somebody. And I tell y'all this all the time. Regarding men, you can't get attached to nothing, man, because they, they, they will take it away from you. You can't get attached. You know? So all this family and shit is conditional. These niggas that have this money, these families be talking shit. Earl broke as a motherfucker. Earl asked me for twenty dollars again, and Earl is this, and Earl is that. I'm telling y'all how these niggas get down. This nigga career probably would have been way better had he moved the hell out. Shit, maybe if he was just moved to Houston, it would have been better. What? You no, know, niggas make their own bed, bro. I understand, but you know, my, my people told me that a long time ago. Move. Know what y'all think about him versus Israel Matamal, newly crowned IBF title, titleist at 154. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe button, the bell icon button. Peace.